Tasting wine is a simple pleasure. However, behind that simplicity lies a very complex drink. A multi-sensory drink like few others, with a living character in continuous evolution, with a unique story that no other wine or even bottle could tell. Wine is a universal drink. However, it is capable of transmitting the local essence, the cultural legacy of the land where it was born, as well as the emotions and illusions of the people who participated in its production. Tasting and learning about wine, apart from being a wonderful hobby, cheer our soul, heart and mind, it allows us to be more social and creative people. And without a doubt, it helps us really stress and anxiety. Sharing it is even better. By uninhibited and relaxing, you could have deeper conversations and even more exciting and sincere. Wine, through its colors and aromas, tell us a large part of its history. In the previous episode, we learned the basic concepts to understand them. We analyzed in detail the first two phases of the process of tasting and evaluating a wine. Today we will complete the process of tasting wine and analyze our sensory impressions to describe, assess and judge the wine. Stay tuned until the end. In a few minutes you will complete the basis to be able to select good wines that will indulge your palate without impacting your finances. Each grape has particular hues. In the previous episode, we learned that observing the color of the wine will give us an idea of its age, body, type of grape it contains, or storage potential. We also learned that when observing the wine, we can appreciate the density or viscosity of the wine. Additionally, in the previous chapter, we learned that we could identify aromas inherent to the type of grape and the use or not of wood during the winemaking and aging process. We made a complete analysis of the most frequent aromas that we can find in white wines, the most common scents that we can identify in red wine, and finally, the typical aromas in sparkling wines. We even analyzed the different aromas in wines aged using French or American oak barrels. In this sense, it is very important to mention that wine is a product of nature, processed by the man. Therefore, these aromas do not come from ingredients or essences that winemakers add to the wine. They are natural aromas of the grape that the wine contains, the land where it was grown, the ripening of the fruit, the hours of sun and rain during the growing season, harvesting time, and the management of winemaking techniques. We understood that aroma identification is a unique process, different in each individual since it depends on each person's sensory experiences. Finally, we conclude that these first two phases are useful in analyzing the expressiveness and connectivity of a wine. They are fundamental tools for professionals who undergo blind wine tastings, or even for you, since you could gather with family or friends to have a fun and different time during a homemade wine challenge. If you do so, please tell me in the comments how it worked. Now, let's continue. Let's taste the wine. We finally go to the part we like and enjoy the most. After observing the colors and appreciating the aroma, we must sip a little of the wine and distribute it throughout the mouth, making it run through the entire interior, allowing it to contact the surface of the tongue and all the taste buds. Next, we will ask ourselves, what feelings do we have? Physiologically, our tongue is capable of identifying sweet, which we will appreciate on the tip of the tongue, salty in the center towards the sides, acidity only noticeable from the sides, bitter, that sensation that we have at the end of the tongue. Additionally, there are three impressions that we must consider when tasting wine. The thermal sensation at the bottom of the tongue towards the throat will tell us about the alcohol content. The weight or texture that we feel in the center of the tongue will help us describe the body, viscosity and bubbles in the case of sparkling wines. And finally, to describe the tannins, we must analyze the sensation of astringency, dryness or roughness in all the soft tissues of the mouth. To do so, we must first understand what tannins are. 
which is one of the most popular words used during a wine tasting. Tannins are a natural and vegetable chemical substance that comes from the skin, the stems, the seeds or the wood of the barrels. They are more abundant in red wines than in whites. There are different tannins. Their presence in the mouth is easily recognizable since it appears as a sensation of astringency, roughness or dryness in the gums, inner lips and palate. The tannins that come from the seeds or stems are usually described as green tannins. The tannins from aging in oak barrels are often called dry tannins. While the sweet, soft and integrated tannins indicate the grape's current ripeness and are responsible for some pleasant sensations, such as the velvety texture and long persistence on the palate, qualities well valued by expert sommeliers, and wine enthusiasts like me. Tannins should not be confused with acidity, which adds freshness to the wine and makes us salivate. Tannins are not a defect. It is quite the opposite. The development and softening of the tannins are among the most critical processes in the evolution of wine, since its quality often depends on it. Time matures the noble tannins, allowing the wine to evolve, rounding it up and making it more elegant, pleasant and complex. On the other hand, the so-called green tannins rarely soften with time. As we can see, tasting wine is easy, but we must keep our senses sharp. At the end of the three previous steps, we will analyze our conclusions to evaluate and describe the wine. This will require two evaluations, a subjective one in which you will discern whether you like the wine or not, and an objective one in which you will evaluate the quality of the wine. By making a comparison with the literature, you probably don't like to read Shakespeare, but you will agree that despite and beyond your likes, Shakespeare was a great writer. Each of us has a different subjective opinion. With practice, you can develop the ability to separate your likes and subjective opinion from the quality of the wine or objective assessment. For example, it is possible to love a particular wine while knowing it is not an excellent wine. To continue our evaluation, let's analyze the following fundamental qualities. Integration, structure, texture, expressiveness, complexity, varietal character and connectivity. We will evaluate the integration of the wine components to define its structure. A wine is balanced when there is a right balance between the basic flavors, salty, sweet, sour and bitter, and the other components such as tannins, astringency and alcohol. For example, the term round is used to describe a wine where all these elements are perfectly balanced. Then, none stands out more than the other. Integration means more than balance, as it requires all components to blend harmoniously. We will also analyze the texture, usually defined with terms like silky, velvety or satin. At this stage, we identify factors such as softness, intensity, body, volume, tannins or astringency, and roughness. Expressiveness is the quality that a wine possesses when its aromas and flavors are well defined and projected. To determine how expressive the wine is, it would help to analyze the retronasal passage. While we pass the wine through the entire mouth, we inhale air, and when we exhale, we would be confirming or identifying new aromas, as well as their intensity and clarity. Complexity is a phenomenon hard to explain. It is like a force that draws you toward a glass of wine and drives you to rapidly return to smell and take another sip because every time you do it, you continually find something new, surprising and pleasant. Wine is a complex drink both for its composition and the sensory message it sends to our receptors. Given its high evolution capacity, no two bottles have the same sensory profile. Even if those two bottles come from a single barrel process under the same method when isolated in their respective containers, the content in each bottle undertakes its own evolutionary adventure, which can create smooth or significant sensory and analytical differences. To understand the varietal character and connectivity of the wine, 
we need to determine whether a given wine has the aroma and flavors inherent to the grapes it contains or whether it has a connection or link with the plot of land it was born. Something similar to cultural identity allows one thing to be different from another and therefore worth appreciating. This attribute is perhaps difficult to determine since it requires a lot of practice. But do not panic! Each video in the New Wine University section in this channel will help you during the process of understanding each grape and wine region around the globe. The structure integration, expressiveness, complexity and connection of wine are not immediately obvious concepts. But if you taste wine slowly and think about these concepts, they will soon start to make sense to you. With practice, you will master these concepts, continue tasting different types of wine, and you will rock it. If you will always try the same wines, it won't be easy to advance. Well, you have already started the path to become a wine expert. If you have any doubts or questions, send them to me through the comment sections down below. I personally answer all the comments of the loyal wine tubers. Tell me about the concepts you learned today. Were they easy to understand? Have you managed to understand your palate? What type of grape or wine is your favorite? Now you should know that the aromas and flavors that we appreciate in wine, even our evaluation, will depend a lot on the moment, the company or the state of mind that we have. Unbelievable but true. Salut and thank you for boarding with us around the world.